Today we're going to be talking about dangerous idols. Dangerous idols. And so we greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We greet you wherever you are, and we pray that God's blessings will be upon you today. We pray that God will open your ears to hear his words to you. Our text coming from Exodus 20 and 3, which reads this way, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for another day, another opportunity. Dear Lord, we're so grateful for how you bless us in so many ways. And Lord, we're so grateful for the blessing of the preached word. So dear Lord, I pray that you allow your servant to be of some use. I pray that you would allow us to understand and hear. Dear Lord, we pray that you allow the word to transform us and change us in a great way. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. So that scripture from Exodus, when Moses received God's instructions, we call it the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, as the Hebrew people waited at the foot of the mountain, God had not up until that point dictated a code he had not framed out exactly what religion, what worship, what the proper worship of him would look like. People have been trying all types of things, including human sacrifice and claiming it to be worship. Matter of fact, God talks about this. Uh, Paul writes about it in Romans. Uh, Romans 1 when he talks about in verse 16, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, excuse me, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and righteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them. So all you need as a baseline to know about God is just look at us and look what's going on in us. We are made amazingly. And God's fingerprints is all over the form and function of our bodies. For he has shown it to them. For since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. And in their foolish hearts, they were darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four footed animals and creeping things. So what that's talking about is people began to make idols. They began to make what they thought God was. This practice of making action figures, images as idols, it continues even today, but not as much as it used to. But again, friends, God said this, you shall have no other gods before me. God delivers the commandments. He gives his law, he gives his word, he gives his prohibition, but here's this, he also gives rewards and blessings for obedience. People always wanna focus on the negative. But the positive is God has rewards and blessings for you if you obey his word. Then he sees them into the land. He promised them a land. He sees them into the land. He sees them into Palestine. God kept his word, but he warned them. Oh, Moses, before he checked out, he gave them that warning. Look, here's all the stuff that you got to do. But here's what's going to happen if you don't do what God is asking you to do then becomes, begins the cycles of disobedience, defiance, distraction, and destruction. As the Jewish nation chased other idols, they had what was real. Before they got there, they had the real image of God as a pillar, a cloud during the day, and a pillar of fire at night. They ate food that nobody else in the world had ever ate, has ever eaten since. They saw him open the Red Sea. They saw him close it back up. They saw him do all these incredible things, but yet they chased after other gods. And so one of the prophets that God sent was Jeremiah. 
And God gave Jeremiah an illustration. He says, look, Jeremiah, go get these uh, Rechabites and, 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 and bring the Rechabites up into the temple and put them in the special part of the temple and lay a whole bunch of wine out in front of them. So Jeremiah does what he says and the Rechabites come in and he says, hey, here, check out all this wine we got here. It's open bar for you all, okay? And they say, no, no, no. Our ancestor, Jonadab, told us we cannot drink wine. We can't have vineyards. We're not gonna build houses. We're always gonna live in tents. And none of us, since he said that, none of us have partaken. So no, we cannot partake. And God said, look at that. These folks have obeyed the word of their fathers until this day. And because they have obeyed, there's always going to be someone of their lineage that's connected to me. I'm always going to remember somebody of their lineage because they have obeyed. But look at you, Israel. I'm your father and you would not obey me. So the bad stuff's going to come upon you. God used that illustration. Obedience denotes loving uh, regard of God. Obedience shows that, yeah, we really do love you. Now, you may think today idols are not a problem. Idols aren't even around anymore. But you would be wrong. There's all types of idols abounding. There's all types of gods with a little g being worshipped. You know what? Uh, 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 they just have new names. These gods, these little gods, are subject of great devotion. And we've all been witnessing it. Think about what's going on with these right here. Just a little piece of fabric. A simple request to wear this piece of fabric to protect yourself and to protect the public health of others. Uh, uh, a self preserving act but no for some this is the beginning of tyranny this is the beginning of the destruction of the American way because see this that you're seeing that's going on right now people acting a fool fighting and cursing and resisting and protesting against doing so simple that's idolatry that's American version of idolatry and here's the thing the God of individualism that we're witnessing, this God bows to nobody. The God of individualism, its church is consumer capitalism. And its worship is, you see it as commercial after commercial, ad after ad, pop up after pop up, says to the individual, buy this and do that. Do whatever you want to do. Satisfy yourself. Entertain yourself. Do what you want to do. When you want to do it. How you want to do it. All you got to do to worship in this church is to spend your money. Furthermore, consumerism fits neatly with the God of individualism. The worship of this individualism facilitates disobedience and rejections of authority and pops up and, and engenders and grows situational ethics. You say, what's situational ethics? Well, that just means whatever the situation is, that's what your ethics is going to be. See? Because the God of individualism will only allow the person to subject themselves to submit when it suits them. I'm not wearing any mask. But then a person may say, well, now your sister has got COVID-19. Now your granddaddy has got COVID-19. Now your wife has got COVID-19. Then all of a sudden, oh, we got to wear mask. We must wear mask. That individualism, that idol of individualism is tripping folks up. But we must be aware of idols. And we must be aware so that we too don't chase after false gods. We're not that much different than the children of Israel. Even today, this, in this world, in this culture, 
People are struggling because the idol of individualism is being promoted from the highest level to the rank and file person. This idol of individualism, you turn it on your TV, you turn it on your iPad, you stream it, it's there constantly in your face. Furthermore, this idol of individualism says don't trust authority, don't be a robot, don't follow anybody, question everything, it promotes the individual to a godlike state. Truth is everybody's now. Thanks to social media, everybody has a platform. Everyone is voicing their own opinion. But I just want to share with you what God said in 1 John 5 and 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God, that if we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Friends, faith is the victory over these burdens and these chains of the world. And the blessings of our faith, there's blessings for that faith. Your obedience to the faith, your obedience to Jesus Christ has blessings. You say, well, what blessings are those? Well, it's right here in 1 John 5 and 11. And this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. You got a blessing of eternal life. You're going to live forever. When you transition out of this, you're going to keep on living. That's a blessing. Furthermore, 1 John 5 and 14, we got confidence and compassion in prayer. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, according, don't miss that, according to his will, you asking to win the Powerball, that's not according to his will. You asking to be the CEO of, of, of Microsoft, if it's not according to his will, it's not going to happen. But if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. In other words, here's another benefit of faith. You have a prayer answering, a prayer hearing God. God's going to hear what you got to say. Now, you try to call up the president, it ain't going to go through. You try to call up the, uh, the CEO of Amazon, chances are they ain't going to go through. You try to call up the, the, the general secretary general of the United Nations, that call ain't going through. You get on your knees and you call up Jesus, that call is going to go through. That's the confidence that we have. 1 John 5 and 18, we know that whoever, whatever is born of God does not sin, but he who is born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. What that means is, because here's another blessing, we have the power to break cycles of sin. We have the power to do what's right. We have the power to overcome those generational things in your family. Uh, uh, uncle so-and-so was this way, so-and-so was that way. Now you that, no, once you get saved, you have power to overcome that. And furthermore, you have power and protection from the devil. And the wicked one does not touch him. Listen, y'all heard that song, My Soul is Anchor. My Soul is Anchor. So for those who may have never been out on a boat, you go out on a boat and the boat needs to stop somewhere, it's going to drop this heavy piece of metal called an anchor. The bigger the boat, the bigger the anchor. The boat is not going anywhere unless that anchor is pulled up. Because of Jesus, because of your faith, you have an anchor that no matter what the devil does, he cannot pull you away from what you've been anchored in. And you're anchored in Jesus. And because of the blood, no matter how strong the devil seems, he cannot pull up that anchor. Your soul is anchored. That's a benefit of faith. 
Furthermore, 1 John 5 and 20, and we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we who are in him who is true and his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Guess what? In an era of there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of disinformation out there. There's a lot of false testimony out there. There's a lot of uh, uh, people got multiple opinions. You are able to stand on truth because you have an understanding. That's one of the benefits of faith. You have an understanding. And the understanding is rooted in the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of truth. So you got Jesus. We have Jesus who is all sufficient, all power, all goodness, all understanding, all sacrifice, all forgiving, all ready to make me and you new. If we got him, we don't need anything else. But at the bottom of what John is saying to us, he says this in 1 John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. After all those incredible things that he said, that we have eternal life, that we have protection, that we have a, a, a connection with God through prayer, that we have identity, that we have a, a truth, that we, we, all these great things, he lays all out. And then all of us, he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Why? Because idolatry is a powerful sin that's been tripping up the people of God since the very beginning when Moses gave the law on Mount Sinai. Keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from entrapments, from entanglements, from ensnarements, from false hopes. And keep your eye fixed on Jesus. He loves us and he has shown it. And how do you do that? It's right here with this last couple verses I want to share with you. By this, we know that we love the children of God. We, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the true love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. The incredible thing about the Christian faith is the things that God is asking me and you to do, we can do them because he sent us the power to be able to do them. In the Old Testament, they had to just do the commandments and just do it on their own strength. And guess what? They couldn't do it. They didn't keep them. And so what God did was he says, I'm going to send my son. And when Jesus here was here, he said, I'm going to send somebody after me called the comforter, called the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is going to give you power. It's going to give you the strength. It's going to give you the wherewithal to do the things that I'm asking you to do. And that's the good news. The commandments are not burdensome because he's given us the tools to keep them. The commandments are a sign that we love and believe him. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my law. Brothers and sisters, we should be encouraged. That which God is asking us to do, we can do it. Because Jesus has born he died and he's resurrected and he's given us the power to do the things that he's asking us to do. God is looking for people who remain faithful in unfaithful times, who remain faithful during stress, during challenges, during pandemics, during hurricanes, during systematic racism, during police shootings, during Jim Crow, during segregation during sexism, during Me Too, he's looking for people who are going to stay rooted in him, who are going to stay anchored in him. And he's given us everything that we need to stay anchored in him. All we've got to do is keep our eye on Jesus. All we've got to do is be remembered we've been covered by the blood. Can't nobody shake us. Can't nobody move us. We have a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? We got it all, friends. We got it all. Why do we want to chase after idols? Why will we get enticed by things that look good on the surface, but there's no substance? Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your love, your faithful love, and your provision. 
you have provided us what we needed so that we may do the things that you're calling us to do. You're calling us to stand on faith. You're calling us to trust in you. You're calling us to share the good news with others. And to do that, you sent your son who died, who was resurrected. And Jesus even now sits at your right side, looking out on our behalf. And for that, we're truly grateful. Dear Lord, we see from the biblical record that idols have been a problem for God's people throughout the ages. Dear Lord, help them not to be a problem for us. Remind us what it's really all about. We'll be ever so grateful. We'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Burton. We hope you enjoyed the message today. We just want to share a few things with you all. Uh, friends, in the midst of the rising uh, infection rate, we want you to pay close attention because we may have to return to just online services only. But we will be communicating with you. Also, I just want to let you know that we are in the process of uh, working very carefully to have a consistent uh, message online. If you want to join that ministry, please give us a call. We will train you, but we just ask for your patience. We're so grateful for your support of the church. Uh, a few things that are coming up that are very important. Uh, friends, the election is coming on Tuesday, and Medicaid expansion is for the greater good of our state, and we ask that you would support that effort as well as uh, be sure to vote for people whom are going to have the community's best heart and mind. Uh, also, the census. If you haven't registered for the census, please register for the census. It's imperative for our community that we get counted. Again, I want to thank you for your support of the church. God bless you, and as always, to God be the glory.